ultimately just stop blaming others and take responsibility. And this can be applied in every area of your life. Usually you're the problem and you're the solution, but it's human nature to want to find someone else or something to blame for the reason why we're in that situation. I encourage you to stop doing that. And that's like a big mindset hack that I have developed that has helped me tremendously. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Scale podcast. I am your host, Mary Catherine, and so excited about today's episode because we're going to dive into my personal daily habits that have completely shifted my relationship with fitness and nutrition and have just improved my overall well being. And I am a firm believer that. Like what works for one person is not necessarily going to work for another person. And we all have to listen to our bodies and, and remember that our lifestyle, our routine, like our career, our family, everything is different from someone else's. Like there's no two people that are living the exact same life. And so when you listen to these daily habits that I practice and, you know, routine that I have implemented for myself just remember that I understand some of these things may be impossible for you. And there may, may be areas where you're doing much better in you know that particular subject than I am when it comes to maybe like your nutrition or your exercise. And like, we're all at different stages of life and different seasons. And I'm in a season right now where I'm an entrepreneur. I have multiple things that I'm you know constantly working on. I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur. And I also have two small children. I have a four and a half year old and a two year old, and they consume a big portion of my day. And it is my responsibility to take care of them. And they're not at the age where they can take care of themselves. And so I'm usually juggling so many different things at once. And these 15 things that I have come up with that have really helped me are things that are like relatively in my control. And it took me a long time to get to this point where I didn't get frustrated when something didn't go according to plan. Or if there were curveballs thrown at me where I just like wasn't in control anymore. And it used to like really bring me down because I like to be in control. I'm, you know, type A personality and being an entrepreneur and a leader, owning multiple businesses. It's like you are so used to being in control. But if there's anything that I've learned, as being a mom, it's that no two days look the same, especially when you have small children. So again, please listen to these today and remember that your season of life may be different than my season. And, you know, there's things in our life that take priority at times when at some time, at some point, that thing may not be able to take priority. So just remember that as you're listening to these. So here we go. Let's dive in. My number one is stop blaming others and take responsibility. And this isn't so much like a daily habit that I practice. It's a mindset habit. It's not something that's necessarily like, you know, at this time I do this. This is a mindset practice that I have taken a lot of time developing and Here's where I'm coming from with this one. I used to blame outside forces when I didn't have time to get my workout in, when I made an unhealthy choice, when I had a negative mindset, when my mornings were crazy. And if you're a mom, you've been here where you get up in the morning when your kids get up, you have exactly 45 minutes to get the lunches packed, everyone fed, in their clothes, teeth brushed, hair brushed, in the car, to school, bam. It's craziness. Like in the mornings at our household, it's like, it's it's a madhouse. And I used to blame everyone but myself. Like I would say, oh, it's Sophia's in a mood today, or she's not listening, or my husband, Trevor, like maybe, you know, I was blaming him for not helping out in an area where I felt like he should or he could. And truthfully, all fingers were pointing back to me. And so what I have started to do over the last year is set myself up in the mornings 
really get up earlier, get up before the kids so that I don't experience that, you know, mindset where I'm blaming everyone for why the household is so crazy this morning, Uh, but ultimately just stop blaming others and take responsibility. And this can be applied in every area of your life. Um, Usually you're the problem and you're the solution, but it's human nature to want to find someone else or something to blame for the reason why we're in that situation. So I encourage you to stop doing that. And, And that's like a big mindset hack that I have developed that has helped me tremendously. All right. Now here is like a real habit that I do have. Number two is my water and greens before coffee. I love coffee. I am a coffee fanatic. I love caffeine and it does not matter. Like it doesn't matter the day I'm always drinking coffee and I just love it. I love the taste. I probably should drink more decaf coffee, but not right now. But anyways, I prioritize my water and I do a daily greens powder. Right now I'm using True Lean greens powder. I have been a True Lean fan for going on, I think three years now, since they started. I love their greens. Some greens out there are a little harsh. These are easy on the stomach. They taste good. I usually do like four ounces of water, one scoop of greens, mix that up and just like take it down like a shot. So I do that every morning before my coffee and I, and I usually get at least 16 ounces of water before my coffee. So that's a good one. Number three is I prioritize protein, especially when eating out, which is your best investment in calories for, for, for protein. So, you know, when I'm eating out, when I'm ordering out, looking at the menu, I really try to focus on like that protein source first, and then what am I going to have with it? And so I am in a season where I'm tracking macros right now. And with my macros, my protein goal is around 130 grams. So if I get to, you know, dinner that evening and I have 40 grams of protein left and I'm dining out, I'm likely going to look at that menu and try to figure out, okay, what could I get to make sure I'm prioritizing getting those 40 grams of protein before I worry about the carbs and the fats that I have left. And I think we really should be doing this at every single meal. Like you should always prioritize your protein source first. Pizza, for example, like if you're going to have pizza for dinner, you know, that's heavy on the carbs. There's not a lot of protein in your pizza. So how can we load up that pizza so that you are getting more protein? And that might even mean just like having a protein shake along with your pizza to make sure you are prioritizing that protein. Because protein is what's going to help you build that muscle, especially if you're training, which you should be, and it's going to help burn fat and it's, it's going to help with longevity. It's going to help with your energy. It's going to help you feel better. It's going to help your skin. It's going to help you look better. So protein is like the end all be all when it comes to nutrition. And it is definitely what I prioritize at every single meal, but especially when dining out. Okay. And my number four is avoiding gluten and processed food. Now, I eliminated gluten about two months ago. I have not been gluten-free for like an extended period of time. However, for me, avoiding gluten, it was really a way for me to avoid processed foods. It, I have noticed a huge difference in my overall gut health since eliminating processed foods. And let me just give you a few examples of some foods that I used to eat a lot of that I don't eat as much of anymore. One of them would be like protein bars. There are a ton of great protein bars out there. And I'm not saying that like you should not have them, but you should not have them every single day. Uh, You should probably have like one or two a week if you're adding that into your, you know, weekly protocol for your diet. Protein bars, like they're a quick, they're a quick way to get your protein, to get your vital macros in. They usually have a good like protein carb fat ratio, but they are processed. And some protein powders, there are some protein supplements that are in these protein bars, they can aggravate your stomach. And so for me, when I would have this one particular kind of protein bar that I just love and I crave, when I would have them several hours later, my stomach would hurt. And so over time, I kind of had to ask myself, like, is it worth it? Is it worth that five minutes of satisfaction to have this protein bar? Or should I consider more whole foods to try to eliminate that bloatedness feeling and just, you know, feeling better, helping myself feel better at all times. And so that is what I am trying to do. I'm trying to get my nutrition from more 
whole foods and prioritizing whole foods, not have as much protein powder, protein bars, processed foods. But another like processed food that I would eat a lot of are like veggie straws. My kids love veggie straws. They're really starch straws. They're just full of starch. Uh, Sure, they may have a hint of real vegetables in them, but they're super uber processed and there's really no nutritional value to veggie straws. Smart pop, rice cakes, all of these things, like they're okay. Like if you are in a pinch and you're hungry and you need something and like you have multiple snack options and that is the healthiest one, then yes, you should pick that. But when you're looking at your weekly protocol for your diet and nutrition, just trying to prioritize getting your nutrients and your calories from real whole foods. And for me to do a better job at that, I just told myself I'm eliminating gluten and I'm eliminating processed foods. And I'll have gluten every once in a while. Um, If it's like a treat, like if I'm having like a piece of cake for someone's birthday, you know, that's like once, once every, once a week or once every two weeks. But for the most part, I am eliminating gluten altogether and I truly have noticed a difference and, it, and I feel great. Many people, they, they hear, you know, oh, I have to avoid gluten. Like that's so hard, gluten's and everything. There's actually a lot of foods that do not have any gluten. And at first when I thought about eliminating gluten, I was like, what carbs am I going to eat? I can eat all carbs except for bread, except for pasta. And there's so many like pasta alternatives out there now, like the Bonza protein pasta made with chickpeas. I love that. And there's no gluten. You can eat rice, brown rice, sweet potatoes, um, quinoa. There's so many gluten-free. There's even gluten-free oatmeal. So there's so many gluten-free options out there that it truly is like realistic and easy to eliminate it. It's just finding those alternatives and knowing like when you're going out, say you're going to a sandwich shop, like you're not going to be able to have the bread. Is there a lettuce wrap option? Is there a salad option? And so just preparing for when you're in situations like that, it's going to make avoiding gluten and the processed foods so much easier. All right. Number five, this is a big one for me. It took a few years to get to this. This is a touchy subject in the health and fitness world right now, and that is alcohol. So I now have a rule for myself that I do not drink when I have to be responsible for my children and or cannot get enough sleep that I need. And so I'm going to break that into two. If I am parenting and I split a bottle of wine or have a few cocktails with my husband, and then the next morning I have to wake up at 6 a.m. with my kids, I am going to be a grumpy human, and I'm not going to feel my best. It causes me to have anxiety because alcohol increases your cortisol levels, which then makes you more anxious. It makes you moody. It makes you very irritable. And so I finally came to a point where I'm like, I'm not doing this to myself anymore. I'm really not doing this to myself Several months back, we went out with some friends, had a good time, had a few too many drinks. The next morning, my son just happened to be cutting a tooth, got up at 5.30. It was like the worst day ever. I had a headache. I I didn't feel happy at all. I felt like that level of depression when you're having to parent, when you're having to deal with all the craziness, but then you also don't feel well. Like it really creeps in, it sets in and it ruins your whole day. And so I've just kind of created this rule for myself where I'm not going to put myself in that situation. Like if we go out to dinner with friends and I have to parent the next day, I can have a drink. That's fine. But I'm not going to have half a bottle of wine or multiple cocktails. Like I'm just not going to do that to myself. But then also the other part of that is when you are drinking, alcohol interrupts your sleep big time. And many people say like, oh, well, alcohol helps me relax. It helps me fall asleep. Sure, it can help you fall asleep. It can help you relax. But truthfully, it's harder to stay asleep. It's it's harder to get in that REM sleep. It's harder to stay in that restful sleep cycle that you need for your body to fully recover when you have been drinking alcohol. And many times you may notice that when you go to bed inebriated, you might wake up at like three o'clock in the morning and use the bathroom or get some water. And then it's hard to fall back asleep. And so alcohol interrupts your sleep cycle. It interrupts your sleep, your natural sleep patterns. And again, it does raise your cortisol levels. And so if you have a bad night of sleep, 
you are going, especially someone with kids, you're going to wake up with higher increased cortisol levels from the time you wake up when you haven't even done anything yet to stress yourself out, but then also add the stressor of your kids and the craziness going on in the morning. On top of that, your cortisol levels are going to be through the roof. And I'm sharing this with you guys because I have experienced this personally and I've had testing blood work done recently on my cortisol levels. And it is just amazing to see the difference when you really do try to eliminate alcohol, when you're not getting good sleep, when you're having to parent early in the morning, like it's just, it's not helping you be show up as that person that you want to be show up as that mom that you want to be. So that's a big one for me. And again, it took a long time to get to this. And I realized that alcohol is a touchy subject because for me, it's always been such a social thing. And there is like this social, there's this pressure around it that when you're out with friends and everyone else is drinking, you feel like you want to be drinking too, or you feel like you're almost like you need to drink, but truthfully, nobody cares. No one cares. No one cares if you have one glass of wine, if you have one beer, if you have a half of a drink, like no one is really paying that much attention. And it took so much training for me mentally to realize that over time and get to that good place where I was like, okay, like I can still have fun. I can still enjoy myself. I can still do all of the same things that I've always loved to do, but I don't have to drink a lot. And so that I can still show up the next morning as the best version of myself and be the best mom that I can be. All right. So number six, making time for daily movement each day and at least three to four days of strength focused workouts per week. And so We all know the great benefits of strength training. Cardio is good as well, but strength training is really key for longevity, for building muscle, for burning fat, for looking lean, just all of the things. Strength training is usually the answer. And so I prioritize daily movement. So strength training workout may be a part of that. I do a lot of walks. I do, I I cycle every once in a while. My husband and I both have bikes. So we go for bike rides on the Greenway. I do not have like a stationary cycle bike. I do not like that actually. I prefer to ride an actual bike. And so I do prioritize my strength training workouts every single week, at least three to four. Those could be Fit Body Bootcamp workouts. Those could be garage workouts. Those could be even like low intensity resistance band workouts workouts. There's so many great options out there today. And so just picking up those weights, don't be scared of the weights. Um, I heard a saying the other day, if you want to look sculpted and lean, you have to train like you want to be big and bulky. And that is so true. But so many women feel that if they lift the heavy weights that they're going to then, you know, walk out of the gym looking jacked. And it's just so far from the truth. But I understand why people People think that way because you do see women in the gym today who are slinging around these, you know, 50 pound dumbbells doing a, you know, shoulder press with, with two forties. And you're like, Whoa, that's amazing. And, and maybe they do have super big muscles and and they look jacked, but you're not going to just look like that from day one. If you start lifting heavy weights, I promise you that. And so making sure that when you do start a new strength training program, that you have a coach, that you have accountability, you have somebody to hold you accountable. And not only that, but it's going to help you along the journey. If you don't know what you're doing, I suggest, you know, finding a gym like Fit Body Bootcamp that has the coaches that are there that are going to help program the workouts for you. They're going to modify the workouts based on your individual needs, because the last thing we want you doing is going into, let's just say like a CrossFit gym and them having their program for the day, and you just be thrown to the wolves doing the same workout that someone else is doing who's been training for three years. And so finding a gym that really meets you where you're out at, knows where your goals are, and figures out a plan for you to progress slowly and just work your way over time towards those goals. And then also find a gym that has like regular check-ins with you to see like, how, how's it going? And maybe your goals have changed. Maybe they've pivoted a little bit and trying to like restructure what your new goals are and and restructure your plan. So uh, whether that's a gym or like a personal coach, having someone like that that can help with those strength-focused workouts could be very beneficial. All right, number seven, one long cardio day. 
I used to love cardio. I still love cardio. It's just my life right now does not allow for the time to do long cardio days. So I used to be big into like half marathons, races, and I still want to say that I'm going to start doing that again in the future. And I probably will, but in order to do a half marathon or a full marathon or an Ironman or a a Tough Mudder, any of those races, you need to put in the time to train. Like you can't just run a few miles here and there and then get up one Saturday morning and run 13 or 26. And so I found like over time when I would try to create like a running plan for myself and not training for anything, just saying like, okay, this week I'm going to run like three or four times and I would get to the end of that week and it didn't happen, I would be very, very frustrated. Like, oh, I wish I could have run more. And so what I started doing is I started saying, I'm going to allow myself one long cardio day a week. And on that day, I just run. I don't do any strength training. I don't do any ab work. And this day is usually on the weekend because it's that's the time where you know my kids are home during the weekend. And it's easy for me to just like, go out in my neighborhood and run for an hour, an hour and a half during like nap time. I might not be able to make it to the gym that day, but I can step outside my front door and go for a run. So usually I do my long run day, my long cardio day during the weekend, but just having this one day has helped me not only physically, but mentally, because when your body moves, your mind grooves and those on those long runs, I think of so many ideas and inspiration. And it truly just, when I get back, I'm in a different mindset. It truly just helps set up my day and set up my mindset to be a super positive, happy person that day. So prioritizing one long cardio has done wonders for my weekly routine. All right. My number eight Like I said, some of these I know could not be implemented in your household and may not be realistic for you, but I have an infrared sauna in our basement. It's a sunlit infrared sauna. My husband and I purchased it about a year ago, and I'm not going to lie. At first, I was very skeptical. It's like, what is this really going to do for us? And the first time I got in it, I was in it for like 10 minutes, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so hot. I have to get out. And now I can crank that baby up to 145 degrees and sit in it for 45 minutes to an hour. I absolutely love it. Um, When I'm in the sauna, I usually read. Sometimes I bring my iPad in on occasion and work on like content creation, but I try to allow myself that time to disconnect, get off my phone, get off social media, read a book that I enjoy that might not necessarily be like helping my career, but maybe just like a fictional book that's helping me relax. I joined a book club recently and I'm very much, I'm very proud of myself for that because I've traditionally been the kind of person where it's like, if this isn't getting me to like the next level in my career or like professionally, then I don't want to be a part of it. But I am finding that I have like great joy and peace being in this book club because all of these ladies, like they all do different things and we're not all in the same profession. Our lives look so different. And these books that we're picking out, most of them are fictional. And it just kind of like lets us take ourselves outside of our day to day, outside of our world and just sit in another space for a little while. And I really, really enjoy that. And so I've been reading my book club books in the sauna when I can. Um, Typically I do the sauna for 30 to 45 minutes, three to four. I would say three to four times a week. Usually it's when the kids go to bed. So around 730, I'll crank it up. I'll crank it up at 630. I'll let it, you know, heat up for an hour. And then around 730, I'll get in it. And it does improve your sleep and your skin. My skin has been so much better since using the sauna regularly. And like I said, in the beginning, I was a little skeptical about like the benefits of it. Like I was reading about it. I saw the health benefits, but I didn't quite believe in it yet. And it took me a long time to develop that weekly routine and that practice of getting in it regularly to actually see the benefits. So if you have access to Asana and you're thinking about adding that into your weekly routine, just know that it takes time and consistency in order to see the results that you can get from Asana. So like improved immunity, circulation, skin, sleep, all of those things. I have seen all of those benefits now because I have been using it regularly for months 
But before when I would get in it every once in a while, like, sure, I wasn't seeing any results. So you do have to give it time like anything. All right. So now we're going to get into some of like the more nitty gritty details when it comes to like working with my kids. So my number nine is I do not check email around my kids when possible. This has helped me so much with my mental health and with that mom guilt. Um, It doesn't matter like what kind of mom you are, working mom, stay at home mom. We all carry around this unspoken mom guilt that we put on ourselves. Like there is no one else holding us accountable for these actions and saying that you should feel guilty about this, except for you. You are setting the standard for your mom guilt. If you're not working enough, if you're not being with your kids enough, you are the only person that can determine that level of need and that level of demand that you have in your job and to be with your family. And so I try not to use the word mom guilt. I try not to even say that I have any mom guilt. However, not checking emails and like disconnecting from my work life when I'm around the kids in the evening has helped me tremendously because I used to be the mom where we'd be in the playroom playing Barbies and I would scroll my phone, check emails, respond to people. And I realized over time that like what I was doing was not important in that moment. And what was most important in that moment was me spending time with my kids, was me showing them that I am fully invested in playing with them and the relationship that I have with them in that moment. And so checking the emails, you know, it really is, it's a two, it's good for both sides. It's good for you and it's good for your kids because they need that one-on-one time. They need that undivided attention. All right, my number 10, we eat dinner very early in our household, typically around like 5.30. Our kids go to bed very early. They're usually in bed by seven. My daughter does not take a nap anymore. So she is like out by seven o'clock. Like she's ready by 6.30. She's getting out of the bath. Sometimes we do like a little bit of TV time after bath while um, we're putting our younger one to bed because he typically goes to bed a little bit earlier. But then once book time rolls around, they are ready. So 7 p.m. is usually when we go to bed in our household for the kids. We eat dinner early. It just really helps. And then with us eating dinner early, like it has helped with my digestion. And I feel like there have been times in our life where we ate really late, like around 8 or 8.30. And this really was around the time where I was coaching at the gym more in the evenings and eating late like that. And then going to bed shortly after just really didn't make me feel like my best self in the morning. So I really do enjoy eating earlier. And then sometimes I'll have a snack at night um, before bed. So around like eight or eight 30, I'll have Greek yogurt or an apple with peanut butter, something like that. All right, my next one, my nightly skincare routine. This is a fun one. I'm one of those people that if I like find a new product, like I'll get all excited about it. And then, you know, there's another new product and I'll get all excited about that. So I can't say that there's like one magic product that I use right now, but I used to use Ronin and Fields all the time. I love that stuff. But about a year and a half ago, I was at my dermatologist and I was telling her what I was using. And she was like, oh, well, I can write you a prescription for these several other topical creams that are a fraction of the cost that you can get at the pharmacy. And so that's what she did for me. One of them is tetranonin and the other one is like a hydro bleaching cream. And it helps if you go out in the sun a lot, helps with like sunspots. I also do like the micro needling roller. I do that every other night. I do a microderm abrasion scrub once or twice a week. So I have like a full skincare routine every single evening, but I will say it's like always changing because when I find like a new product that I want to try, I get really excited about it and I try it. So I can't say I've been using like this product for ever. Like I'm just, I'm not one of those people, but I do like my nightly skincare routine. I could never be one of those people that like sleeps in their makeup. Just, I cannot do it. Like that's one of the first things that I like doing when I, at the end of the day, is just taking off all of my makeup, scrubbing my face, getting it all clean. There's just something so satisfying about it. All right. My number 12 is going to bed early and waking up early. 
Going to bed early for us is usually between 9.30 and 10.30. If we make it to 11, we are both like, oh my gosh, we got to go to bed. It actually like gives us anxiety because we know that we have to get up early the next day. So going to bed early has helped us tremendously. And I will say like, I realize that sometimes the evening is like your sacred time to spend with your spouse or your significant other, or even just by yourself. If you stay at home with your kids all day, like I know that you need that time. So in order to get that time, that really means that we have to stack everything that we need to get done during the day so that when the kids go to bed, we don't feel like we have a laundry list of things to do that we can truly relax for that hour, two hours that we have before going to bed and starting our nighttime routine. So I will mention that. Like I do realize that some people are at that stage where when their kids go to bed, like they have to do the laundry and the dishes and clean the house. And maybe they also have like a job that they have to work on in the evening. And so if that's you, like that's a season that you're in, going to bed early may not be realistic for you and that's okay. And if you're not going to bed early, you're likely not getting up early either. Um, I'm not gonna recommend it. But if you are going to bed early and your schedule does allow, like waking up early has helped me tremendously as well. Before I get to that one, my number 13 is like packing lunches and getting your morning set up before bed. This has helped me so much. Usually after I put the kids to bed, I will go into my office for five minutes and I will create a new sheet, a new to-do list that evening of what I have going on the next day. And if there's anything that I need from my husband, anything that he needs to know about, I'll make sure that he knows. I do use my use my Google Calendar for pretty much everything. It's like my Bible for my life, but I also like to write it down as well, just so I can cross it off. There's something so satisfying about that. Um, okay. And then, you know, during that time, my number 14 was a brain dump. So that to-do list also serves as not only like, what do I have going on? But if I know like, I need to go to the grocery store and get almond milk, or I need to send my husband to do that. Like that just full on brain dump before relaxing in the evening, before going to bed and before waking up that next day and just having it all down can really, really help for the guideline of that next day. And then my final daily habit that has really shifted my relationship with fitness and nutrition and improved my overall well-being is my self-care appointment once a week. And don't feel selfish about this ladies, because like we all need it. Like if you're a mom, if you're, if you're not a mom, like everyone needs that hour of self-care each week. And sometimes for some people that could be going to the gym, um, which is great. Like, I hope that you have multiple self-care appointments with yourself. If it is the gym per week, However, for me, it's usually like a facial or getting my nails done, IV therapy, maybe even just that sauna session. So having at least once a week, a self-care appointment, it could be retail therapy, going to Target by yourself for an hour. Like how fun is that with Starbucks in hand? And so having that time just carved out for yourself has really helped me. Traditionally, I do this on Fridays. Mondays are like my catch up day for everything that like happened during the weekend, make sure my week is set up. And then Fridays are usually my day where I'm able to relax a little bit more and maybe have that self care appointment for myself that day. So those are my 15 things that I practice daily that have helped my mindset, my overall physical health and wellness, uh, my relationship with food and nutrition. You know, it's helped me in my motherhood journey, which I know that no two motherhood journeys look the same. And it's such a challenging but rewarding time to be in. Um, and this season that I'm in right now, I know is, is going to change as my kids get older and as my career changes, as my life changes, like these daily habits may change as well. And I'm open to that and I'm okay with that. And right now I'm just focusing on what I can control and taking control of those things and being the best that I can in those areas. So there you have it. I'd love to know what some of your daily habits are. Just make sure that you are subscribing to our YouTube channel, Beyond the Scale. Follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and please leave us rev a review and with your biggest takeaway and share Beyond the Scale with all of your friends it is my goal to help educate our community on how to live their best lives in and outside of the gym and just spread the word of body positivity everywhere, you guys. So thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you soon.